Hey everyone, welcome back to Red's Roundup. In this video, we're looking at growth versus value in a low interest rate world and what that means for you and your stock picks. Let's get into it right now. Before we get into the details of value versus growth in a low interest rate environment, we first have to look at why interest rates matter in investing and how that will calculate into your stock picks and your decision making. So what do we use interest rates for in the analysis of securities? So we use interest rates to calculate present value of future cash flows. What does that mean? That means we use the interest rate, the risk-free rate, usually uh, United States government bonds, to determine the discount rate in a discounted cash flow analysis. And if you know what a discounted cash flow analysis is, you know that's how we determine the intrinsic value of a business. So here is the cash discounted cash flow formula. We see here 1 over 1 plus the interest rate times the number of years. And you multiply that by the, um, the cash flow for that given period. So we see here for the first year, 1 times 1 plus the interest rate, which in this uh, discounted cash flow analysis model, they used a um, a 10% discount. Um, they increased that throughout the value of the business, which in th this case they used five years. And then they calculate a terminal value. And the terminal value is really just saying, we don't know what's beyond this point. So we're going to just lump all these future cash flows into one pile. Or another way of thinking about the terminal value is it's the price which you sell your stock at. That will be the terminal value. So you'll say you'll hold the stock for five years, and then after that, the terminal value is going to be the price you sell your stock for. So, and in this case, the value of these future cash flows is six hundred five million, and this is how you find the intrinsic value of a business. You find how much cash. This is Warren Buffett thing. How much cash is it going to produce over the life of the business? from now until what he says judgment day so from now until eternity how much cash will this business generate for its owners and that's how you decide on the value of the business and so we see here that um, the the discount per however many uh, units of cash so in this case 100 the amount of present value of that cash decreases over time so that's an interesting thing. Now let's get into why this matters in the value versus growth paradigm and how that is changing with the lower in interest rate environment. So here we have a couple of spreadsheets that I've made that are actually discounted cash flow models of a generic growth stock and a generic value stock. And we're going to be looking at how the intrinsic value of the growth stock changes when you go from a high interest rate environment to a lower interest rate environment. And we're going to be looking at the value stock and how that changes intrinsic value from a higher interest rate environment to a lower interest rate environment. And what that difference means in investing going into the future, knowing that the Federal Reserve has said they want interest rates at nearly zero for a number of years into the future. So let's start here in the value discounted cash flow um, spreadsheet. We are in the high interest rate environment here. So let me run you through a few things. So here on the left, we have year. I went all the way to 50 years just to show a point, and we're not including a terminal value because we're essentially saying after that 50 years, the business is just going to close up shop, and it's not going to produce any more cash flow after that. And here we have the cash flow in each of those years. That You could think about this as like cash flow per share or whatever you want to think about it as. Basically, for, think about this for however much you own. This is the cash flow you're going to get for your ownership of whatever it is. This could be real estate, stocks, bonds, anything. Now let's look at the present value of that cash flow. We applied the, the, uh, the interest rate, the discount rate. We're going to get into that to the cash flow. So we discounted the cash flows and get a present value for each of the year's cash flow. And then we sum them up here to get this net present value. Let's look at what I did here in terms of growth rates and interest rates and risk-free rates. So we have from year two to 10, I said that the cash flows from your ownership is gonna increase by 5%. And then it's gonna go down, this is a value stock, remember, it's gonna go down after year 10 
subsequently. It's, the cash flows are going to decrease. So the present value of your cash flows are going to be front loaded in the first 10 or so years. This is really just a demo. And we have here for the high interest rate, not even necessarily high interest rate, but just what interest rates were at before the coronavirus crash, we had a discount rate of about 7%. So how do I get that number? I include the risk-free rate, the 10-year treasury rate, which was about 2%. And I added that, we see here, I added that to a 5%. So what's that 5% from? That is actually coming from a risk premium that we add to a stock investment. The risk premium in stocks hovers around 5 or so percent. It's been around that for quite a while now, and it, it changes by country. But since we're doing the USA, the United States stock market, we are just going with the 5% risk-free rate. So we have a 7% discount rate, and that cash flow is being discounted by the 7% rate every year compounded. So this discount rate compounds over time. That's why we see here, even when the business is earning 0.4, that present value is only 0.1. And we see at the beginning here, when the business is earning 1, the present value of that is a, just a little bit lower in the higher discount. Area. So we, we come up with a net present value or an intrinsic value for this business in a higher risk, um, higher interest rate environment of about 15.8. Now let's go to the low rate environment. Everything stayed the same. The cash flow stayed the same. It, and the uh, increase or decrease in cash flows per year stayed the same. The discount rate, however, went down to 4.5. The risk-free rate went from 2 to 4.5, and, and we actually de decreased the uh, risk premium, the equity risk premium, by half a percent to just for effect because in the low interest rate environments with the Fed propping everything up, we, we're going to say that the uh, risk um, premium is actually going down to 4.5%. So here we are four percent, excuse me. So here we have four percent. Those present values are being discounted at a lower number. We're actually getting an intrinsic value of twenty dollars, and now that's a thirty-two percent increase. And that might actually sound like a lot, but when we look at the high growth stock, it's not going to look like so much. So onto the high growth stock, you know the details of the spreadsheet. Let's get into one key element with the high growth stock we're saying that this company is going to have negative or zero cash flows for the first nine years of its if of its of your ownership of its existence and then after that it's going to start earning money and it's going to earn a lot of money in the back end of the discounted cash flow so from years 10 to 50 it's going to be earning almost all of its money and we see here that we assigned it a rather high growth rate in these years and so what does this mean? So let's look here. This means I went to the high interest rate environment. So we have that again, that discount rate of 7% and the risk-free rate of 2%. This equals a net present value for this arbitrary growth stock of about $50. Now let's look what happens when we go to the low risk-free rate of 0.5, which is what the 10-year treasury is at right now. It's around 0.5. It may be a little bit higher or lower depending on when you're watching this. But it this stock's intrinsic value or business's intrinsic value increased all the way up to 110. So that is a, let's highlight this here because I want everybody to see it. That's a 121%, almost 122% increase in intrinsic value when a growth stock goes from a higher risk-free rate, so from that 2% we have here, it was worth $50 then, to a lower interest rate environment, it's worth over $110 then. This is the same, these are the same financial data for cash flows. It's worth over 121%. If we compare that to what the value stock increased to, it went from 17-ish, Eight or 15.8 or 16 to 20.9 that was an increase of only 32 percent so this is telling us when we're in a low interest rate environment or we are going from a higher interest rate environment to a lower interest rate environment value stocks are going to outperform in that um, time where that interest rate is really adjusting so that's why now we see stocks like amazon let's pull up 
Amazon, why stocks like Amazon are really rocketing up since the coronavirus crisis and interest rates have gone to zero. We see at March 13th or so, it was at around 2000. It's over almost 3000 now. It's, it's gone up by almost $1,000 per share. And now you know why. Why that is partly, not all of it, but part of it is because Amazon is a growth stock where we see a lot of their cash flows are going to be coming in those later years. This is, this, that's a value, excuse me. And if we see a stock like, what, what's a good value stock that you might want to look at? How about Berkshire Hathaway? B-R-K-B stock. If we look at them for the past year, they are actually below where they were before the coronavirus crisis. Now, why is that? That's because they think that there has been a material impact to their ability to generate future cash flow, and it's not going to be increasing as much as the growth stock because of the low interest rates. So when you're investing and you're picking stocks, be sure you understand how the growth versus value affects your present value of cash flows. Because after we've seen here in these two spreadsheets, a high growth stock, if you think interest rates are going to be very low for a long time, is going to be worth a lot more than it was before this coronavirus crisis, even with that small decrease in the 10-year treasury rate. So I'm not saying whether you should invest in high growth or value. I'm just saying understand the financials and how the lower interest rate will affect your returns over time and what that means for the net present value of cash flows. So tell me what you think. Did you find this video informative? Did you think there's something I could improve with my spreadsheets? I'm very open to that idea. Um, so subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.